Nice launch trajectory countdown net, pad is clear. 10, 9, 8, Launch auto sequence has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engine start. Engine start. One. Go for launch. Vehicle is supersonic. Stage separation confirmed. Dragon separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing legs have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Good afternoon, everyone. It is Monday, February the 6th, and you are looking at a live view of Falcon 9 awaiting its 8.32 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Good afternoon. My name is Shiva, and I'm a space operations engineer here at SpaceX. I'm joining you from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California, and welcome to our live coverage of the Amazonas Nexus mission for our customer, Hispasat. Today's launch marks our 208th overall mission and our ninth launch of this year. Our customer today, Hispasat, is a Spanish satellite communications operator, and they provide connectivity solutions to the Americas, Europe, and North Africa. The Amazonas Nexus satellite that's flying today will serve as a replacement for the Amazonas 2 satellite and will cover North and South America, the North and South Atlantic corridors, as well as Greenland. We're going to have a bit more about the satellite a little bit later on in the webcast, but at T minus 11 minutes, why don't we learn a little bit more about our launch vehicle, the Falcon 9. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ronnie Foreman, and I am a commercial sales manager here at SpaceX. On your screen right now is our Falcon 9 launch vehicle, a two-stage rocket that is designed and manufactured by SpaceX for the reliable and safe transport of people and payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. The entire vehicle on your screen stands just about 229 feet tall, or slightly taller than the towers of Westminster Abbey in England. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage, also referred to as the booster. Its primary objective is to accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to space and then separate from the rest of the rocket. Not only is the first stage the largest part of the rocket, but it's also the portion that we attempt to land on either our autonomous drone ship or back on land for future reuse. On your screen right now, you see today's landing target, our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Reusability is important as it allows us to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the cost of access to space. True to form, today's booster is flying for the sixth time, having previously supported SES-22, iSpace's Hakuto-R Mission 1, and three Starlink missions. Moving on up, above the first stage is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum, or MVAC, engine on board which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Amazonas Nexus payload to orbit. The payload for today's launch is safely enclosed of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is the large barrel structure you're looking at now with the pointed nose on top of the second stage. Made of carbon composite material, the fairing protects satellites on their way to orbit. The fairing is then jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. The fairing halves supporting today's mission are also both flight proven, with one half flying for the fifth time and the other for its sixth. After separation from the second stage, both fairing halves will return to Earth to be recovered by our recovery vessel, Bob. And lastly, that large trust structure that you see there is the transporter erector, or TE. We use it to roll the rocket out to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and the satellite until Falcon 9 takes over on internal power and clears the launch pad. Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since the T minus 35 minute mark. Now on Falcon 9, we use two kinds of propellants. The first of those is a type of kerosene called Rocket Propellant 1 or RP1. We use that as a fuel. And then we use Super Chilled Liquid Oxygen or LOX as our oxidizer. Now the RP1 is nearly fully loaded on the first stage. The second stage is fully fueled. 
and liquid oxygen loading is underway on both these stages. We'll complete liquid oxygen loading on the first stage around the three minute, T minus three minute mark and on the second stage around the T minus two minute mark. We've also begun loading helium gas into Falcon 9. We use helium as a pressurant and we use that to push RP-1 and the liquid oxygen to the Merlin engines at the base of the vehicle. Now, around the T minus seven minute mark, we'll hear some call outs about engine chill beginning on the Merlin engines. That's where we flow a small amount of that super chilled liquid oxygen into the Merlin engines turbo pumps. And that's ahead of the full flow of liquid oxygen as we perform uh, liftoff and fire those engines. Finally, we've got the transporter erector retraction that's coming up around the T minus four and a half minute mark. We pull away the transporter erector slightly from the vehicle. That's to provide clearance for Falcon 9 to lift off. And as we get to T minus zero, it'll pull away further with ground hydraulic systems. Engine um, chill has started. There's the call out there for engine chill. So now at the T minus seven minute mark, Falcon 9 continues to look healthy. The payload is on internal power, also looks healthy. We're tracking no issues on the range and weather, uh, although you can't quite see from the video, is a 95% chance of go today. But if for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow starting at 5.32 p.m. Eastern time. As Shiva mentioned earlier, our mission today is Amazonas Nexus for our customer Hispasat. Amazonas Nexus is using the Space Bus NEO platform developed by TELUS Alinea Space and will have an innovative all electric propulsion system on board, one, RP1 making it is complete. a lighter satellite and therefore less expensive to send to orbit. You may have just heard the RP1 completion call out there on the nets. Um, so now let's take a second to learn more about today's mission and the payload on board Falcon 9. HISPASAT is giving a new boost to its satellite fleet with the Amazonas Nexus. This new satellite will offer state-of-the-art telecommunication solutions in the KUHTS band all across the Americas, the North and South Atlantic Corridor and Greenland. The Amazonas Nexus is designed to provide high-capacity connectivity services in aerial and maritime mobility environments. The satellite will also offer broadband services in remote areas, wherever you are. The satellite also incorporates a payload focused on secure communications, demanded by governmental and defence sectors. The Amazonas Nexus features a digital transparent processor to increase its geographic flexibility and to adapt to market demands while in orbit. Manufactured by Talus Alenia Space on a Spacebus NEO platform, the Amazonas Nexus will be located in the 61 degree west orbital position and will replace and expand the capacities of the Amazonas 2 satellite. Its advanced design, HTS capacity and versatility make the Amazonas Nexus the most efficient satellite in Hispasat's fleet. Now we have started the process of transporter erector retract. You can see that the clamp arms have begun to open around the second stage and we'll see here the transporter erector slowly pull away from the rocket. It'll pull away slightly and then as we get to T minus zero, we'll actually see it clear the way even further as Falcon 9 lifts off. The transporter erector and the first stage are attached to uh, a launch mount at the base of the TE. Now that structure is hinged and we use ground hydraulics to pull that away, further away in preparation for launch. We heard some call outs there that we've begun to pressurize the stage in preparation for strong back recline and uh, full, for the strong back fully reclining. We're about 20 seconds away from our next major milestone. That'll be liquid oxygen loading complete on the first stage followed around the T minus two minute mark by a similar call out on the second stage. When we're fully stage loaded, load is complete. 
Oh, there we go. Call out for first stage lock load complete. Now when we have full propellants loaded on Falcon 9, we've got about a million pounds of both RP-1 fuel and liquid oxygen. And you see some clouds forming around the uh, first stage and the second stage. Those are totally normal. The liquid oxygen that we're loading is extremely cold. And uh, as those tank skins end up coming into contact with the moist Florida air, water vapor condenses around them and produces clouds around the vehicle. That produces that uh, white looking gas around Falcon 9. So coming up, next major milestone will be liquid oxygen loading complete on the second stage. Following that, we will clear the lines in the transporter erector leading to the uh, stages. Just clearing out the propellants in those lines in preparation for liftoff. And then around T minus 60 seconds, we'll transition into startup. Now, startup means that Falcon. Stage two, lock load is complete. There's the call out for lock load complete. So we're fully loaded with, with propellants for today's liftoff attempt. Now, in startup, that means that Falcon 9's flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. They'll continue to have control of the vehicle through the Ground rest of started. the mission. Then at T minus two seconds, we'll hear a call out. Excuse me, we'll see the Merlin 1D engines ignite for liftoff. This time, the payload and Falcon 9 continue to be healthy. We're tracking no issues with the vehicle, and both the weather and range are looking green for today's launch opportunity just about a minute from now. Falcon 9 is in startup. SpaceX, LD, go for launch. So with the launch director's final go for launch, Falcon 9 is in startup. All systems go for today's launch attempt. We're going to watch as Falcon 9 takes Amazonas Nexus to orbit. 30 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Stay close to the point of the goblin. We're at T plus 30 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 successfully lifting off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, and we're carrying the Amazonas Nexus payload on board. Now we've begun tilting the engine, that's called gimbling, and we've begun to turn the rocket horizontally away from Power the and telemetry pad. nominal. That is called a gravity turn. Now we're still going up, but we're also heading away horizontally from the launch pad. Just throttled down the Merlin 1D engines in preparation for our next event. That's the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle, point of highest stresses during ascent. Max Q. So, with that, we are through the point of highest stresses on Falcon 9. Now, the next major milestone will be coming up at around the T plus two minute and 30 mark. That'll be main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then seek out. And back engine chill. Excuse me, and second engine start number one. Now, I talked a little bit earlier about the gravity turn. Part of the reason why we do that maneuver is to pick up velocity. 
a rocket has to go about 17,500 miles an hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth. And that's why these next three events are pretty important. Miko is where we shut down all nine of the Merlin 1D engines in preparation for stage separation. That's where the first and second stages will separate. And then we'll start up that Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage for second engine start number one. It's ultimately the Merlin vacuum uh, and the second stage that will carry the Amazonas Nexus satellite into orbit around our planet. So again, those three events coming up in just under 10 seconds. Main engine cut off. Acquisition of signal Bermuda. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Great views. On the left-hand side of your screen, we're looking up through the inner stage at the second stage. And we've got a view here on the right-hand side of our screen of the Merlin vacuum engine starting its burn. This burn will continue about until the T plus eight minute mark. Next major milestone will be fairing separation on the second stage, that coming up at about T plus three and a half minutes. Now that we are outside of most of the atmosphere, we don't need to carry the weight of those fairing halves. So we'll jettison them back to Earth for attempted recovery and reuse on a future mission. Fairing separation confirmed. Great views from the top of the second stage. You can see that the fairings have separated. Once again, we'll be attempting to recover these fairing halves for use on a future mission with a recovery vessel named Bob. It's just about T plus four minutes into today's mission. And if you're just joining us, we had a successful liftoff at 8.32 p.m. Eastern from our Space Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. And you're joining us in the middle of the first of two planned MVAC burns ahead of satellite deployment. This is a particularly exciting portion of the mission because we have two major events happening right on top of one another. Right now, you've got that beautiful view of the second stage engine burn. And coming up at around T plus six minutes, on your screen, you'll see the first stage's entry burn begin. For the entry burn, we will relight three of the Merlin M1D engines on board the first stage, starting with the center E9 engine, and followed shortly after that by the E1 and E5 engines, which collectively work to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which help us recover and reuse the first stage booster. The first entry burn will be one of Not two entry for both vehicles. scheduled burns for the first stage, and you can hear both vehicles are still on track. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing those Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also called the rocket plume and this deposits a layer of soot on the surface of the vehicle. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight builds up a little more on the outside of Falcon 9, making it look just a little bit toastier. In the bottom of your screen, you can see that Falcon 9 is still picking up speed and continuing to climb on its way to space. Stage one entry burn startup. There we heard the call out that our entry burn has begun. Stage one FTS is saved. If you're just joining us, on the left-hand side of your screen is the first stage re-entry burn, and on the right-hand side, we have the second stage on its way to orbit. We expect this entry burn to last just about another 10 seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. There we have confirmation of stage one entry burn shut down. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. 
The Falcon 9 first stage on your screen that is supporting today's mission is about to perform, it, perform its final entry burn for the sixth time, previously having supported SES-22, iSpaces, Hakuto-R Mission 1, and three Starlink missions. Today's landing target is our drone ship, just read the instructions, which is positioned in the Atlantic Ocean, about 325 nautical miles off the coast of Florida. The Merlin engines on board both the first and second stage are actually quite similar, but they are optimized differently. The Merlins on stage one are optimized for sea level. These achieve approximately 190,000 pounds of thrust during both ascent and descent. Fun fact, at liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power and is consuming approximately 700 gallons of fuel per second. By contrast, the MVAC engine is optimized for approximately 220,000 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Stage 2 FTS is saved. Which is, of course, the vacuum of space. Stage 1 landing burn. See that stage one landing burn has begun, and in just a couple of seconds here, we will shut down the MVAC engine on our second stage. MVAC shut down. There you have it. Now we're stage just, one landing deploy. just awaiting confirmation of nominal orbital insertion for the second stage. Nominal orbit insertion. Good call outs there. And hopefully you heard it through the cheers in the background. Expected loss of signal, Cape Canaveral. That landing marks SpaceX's 170th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Of course, the mission isn't over yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. After the coast phase, we will light the MVAC engine for a second time at around T plus 26 minutes. We'll see you back here before then. In the meantime, enjoy the Space Tunes. Expected loss of signal, Bermuda.
century AD. We sat there and looked at a rocket from Mars and you just boggled the mind and mind and mind and mind. And the technology caught up to them.
position of signal. Kaboom. Welcome back to the webcast of our Falcon 9 mission carrying the Amazonas Nexus payload for our customer, Hispasat. We've had a nominal mission so far. Falcon 9 successfully launched at 8.32 p.m. Eastern from Space Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. We also successfully recovered the first stage back on our drone ship tonight. Just read the instructions, which was positioned in the Atlantic Ocean. That marks the sixth landing for this particular booster and the 170th overall landing of an orbital class rocket. The second stage completed its first burn, taking the Amazonas Nexus payload into an, an initial parking orbit in low Earth orbit. Now we are just about 30 seconds away from the second ignition of the MVAC engine, which will carry the second stage and Amazonas Nexus into the orbit needed to deploy the satellite. There you can see on your screen that we've had reignition of MVAC on board the second stage. This burn is planned to last about one minute. And during this time, what we're doing is actually boosting both the second stage and the payload from that parking orbit I mentioned into our target geostationary transfer orbit for our customer Hispasat. Just about 30 seconds left in this burn. And obviously, it's a beautiful day up in space. There on your screen, we had second engine cut off too, and we are waiting for a confirmation of good orbit from the nets. At this point, the Amazonas Nexus payload is still attached to Falcon 9's second stage, with payload deploy scheduled to occur in just about eight minutes. And we do have confirmation of a good orbital insertion for that second burn. So while we wait, sit back, enjoy those views, and check out the Space Jams once again.
Acquisition of signal. Part of B-Stock. Welcome back. We are nearing the end of our mission today for our customer, Hispaset. About seven minutes ago, we had successful completion of our second burn on the second stage. And coming up, loss of signal, coming up, we have our final milestone for today's mission, which is payload deployment. That's coming up at about T plus 35 minutes, 44-ish seconds uh, into today's mission. Now, as a reminder, the Amazonas Nexus satellite will serve as a replacement for Amazonas 2 and will provide coverage for North and South America, Greenland, and the North and South Atlantic corridors. The Amazonas Nexus satellite has an all-electric propulsion system that makes it a lighter satellite and reduces the cost of putting it into orbit. And following deployment into this geosynchronous transfer orbit, the satellite's going to exercise a few of its systems to get into its final operational geostationary orbit. So coming up next, major milestone is payload deployment.
Payload separation confirmed. And there is a great shot from the top of the second stage, watching the Amazonas Nexus satellite continue on with the rest of its mission. But that is going to end our webcast coverage for today. Acquisition of Signal Maldives. All of us here at SpaceX want to thank our customer, Hispasat, for entrusting us with today's mission. We also want to give a shout out to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's efforts. Today's launch concludes our 208th overall SpaceX mission to date and our ninth launch just this year. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again soon.